Hey everyone, so Hasbro have released new images of some more upcoming Transformers Studio Series figures and this looks like a fantastic lineup. I'm really, really excited about this. So let's jump right into it. First guy we've got is Voyager Class 2007 Megatron. Finally, this is a guy that we have been wanting for a really, really long time now. Like ever since the movie masterpiece 2007 Megatron, we've been wondering when are they going to make a Studio Series version and now finally we're going to get him and he's looking to be really, really impressive. He is immediately recognizable as that first movie-verse Megatron design. Now his lower legs do look a wee bit thick from the side. Now I don't know if you can tell but from this angle it looks like the wings in his jet mode actually fold in to his leg. So legs are probably made to accommodate that but it is something that, that's kind of noticeable from the side but it's really not that big a deal to me. And then as you can see he comes with his mace weapon <laughs> which he used in several parts of the movie including the oh so unwise <laughs> part where he knocks them off the roof so uh, you can definitely recreate that scene and of course the jet mode looks really really cool now in the first 2007 leader class figure of Megatron and I think in the movie his head was actually visible in jet mode and if you actually look at the jet mode as it is here it doesn't look like his head is actually visible anywhere like it would usually be visible just behind the nose cone so I think that's pretty interesting but nonetheless I think the jet mode looks really really fantastic it's just oh it's so great to finally have this Megatron in Studio Series form. I'm really, really excited for this guy to come out. Next up we have Leader Class Constructicon Scavenger from Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. This guy looks stunning. Oh my god, I love the paint scheme on this guy. I love the red. It's a really sharp looking red, a really reflective metallic looking red. I don't know how it's going to look in the finished toy, but from here at least the colours look really striking and it really pops out at you. I love the way this guy looks. And as you can see, of course, he is going to be a Leader Class figure, which definitely makes sense, I think, because I mentioned this in my previous Transformers Studio Series video. Hasbro are apparently making these figures to scale with each other. Now, of course, not every figure in the Studio Series line scales with each other, but I think that's one of the general intentions with this line. And Scavenger's vehicle mode in the movie, and Scavenger in its robot mode, was a really large Transformer. He absolutely towered above other Transformers, as well as his fellow Constructicons. So making him a leader class figure, to give him that extra bit of size and presence as well. I think that makes a lot of sense and also will help benefit the Devastator combined mode which all the Constructicons are of course going to form and Scavenger if I'm not mistaken forms Devastator's torso so if they add in a bunch of really thick tight joints on him I think that would really greatly benefit the combined Devastator mode so I'm really excited to see how this figure turns out he's looking really really awesome and I love the alien and otherworldly design like the wheel at the bottom and the wheel at the top and the two claws at the side and his head in the middle it's just really really cool I'm definitely very excited to get this guy I think he's shaping up to be very very awesome then we have another Constructicon Voyager class Mixmaster also from Revenge of the Fallen I think he looks very very cool and of course he transforms into his cement mixer mode and it definitely looks very accurate I don't know if you can see but at the back it looks like his claws are actually folded up just behind the mixing barrel so I'm not sure how that's gonna look if you were to like get the figure in his vehicle mode and then turn him around I don't know how obvious it's going to be that those are in fact claws. If they're going to try and disguise them a little bit to make them look like part of the vehicle mode, I don't know. So I'm definitely interested to see how they pull that off. Now here's another thing. The 2009 Voyager Mixmaster was a triple changer. Now that is accurate to the movie because in the movie Mixmaster transformed into, of course, his robot mode, his vehicle mode, and he also transformed into a kind of cannon mode, not unlike G1 Galvatron. And the toy managed to pull that off. But here's the thing. The 2009 toy did not transform into a Devastator head because of course Mixmaster forms the head of Devastator. That was of course left for the big Devastator set that came out in 2009. The Mixmaster toy in that set was the cement mixer but there was no robot mode or cannon mode. He just transformed into Devastator's head. So with this figure I don't know how many modes he's going to be capable of transforming into. If I had to guess looking at this since they don't show a cannon mode my guess is that they're going to sacrifice the cannon mode in favor of making him being able to transform into his robot mode, cement mixer mode, and devastator head mode. That's what I'm thinking, but we'll wait and see. But this guy is definitely looking very cool, and I think we'll make a very cool addition to the Studio Series Constructicon team. And last but certainly not least, we have Leader Class Shockwave from Transformers Dark of the Moon. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I'm absolutely blown away with how this figure is looking right here. This is by far the most screen accurate figure representation of Shockwave from the Dark of the Moon movie. This is one of my favorite Shockwave designs in Transformers history. I love how Shockwave looked in Dark of the Moon. Now, he could have been utilized better and he could have had much more lines and more personality. But in terms of the design, I absolutely loved. I loved how he looked badass, epic. He definitely looks someone you wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of. And this figure definitely looks to capture that essence. And the purple as well. This is what I'm really appreciating here. In the movie, Shockwave seemed to have a very dull grey colour scheme, which absolutely boggles my mind. I don't know why they didn't give him his bright, traditional purple colour scheme. That seems like such an integral part of Shockwave, but that seems to be something that they've rectified with this figure. He looks great in purple, and dashes of gunmetal grey and gold and the red eye. He looks so cool. And of course he comes with little wheelie and brains figures. I don't think they're going to transform, but they still look very cool. And of course we get Shockwave's tank mode looking awesome. Now from this angle, we can only really see the front of it. So as time goes on, when Hasbro maybe puts this figure on display at a few conventions or whatever, then we'll be able to get a better look at the tank mode. But from what we're seeing right now, it looks very, very cool. I like how the spikes on Shockwave's feet by the looks of it will end up on the front of the tank. So that'll definitely give the tank an edge of menace. It definitely doesn't look like something you'd like to be stuck in front of, especially with that cannon. And of course, the sword piece that's on Shockwave's left arm ends up on the top of the tank. Now, on the top of the tank, just underneath the sword piece, it does look like you can see Shockwave's hand. Now, the thing is, maybe you could visualize the hand on the tank as a set of claws or something. You know, like that's something I can do. You know, I, I like using my imagination in these sorts of things. Uh, or, or maybe that was the intention to begin with. I don't know. But in any case, I don't think it really looks bad at all. I actually think it looks pretty cool. Now, here's the thing. Shockwave here is apparently a leader class figure. Now, in the movie, I'm not sure how tall or big he was next to like Megatron or Optimus Prime. I always thought that Shockwave was around the same size as Optimus, while Megatron was slightly taller than Optimus. So I don't know how big he's going to be next to the studio series Optimus Prime and Megatron. If he is the same size as the Dark of the Moon leader class Megatron, I don't know whether or not that would be a little bit too big, or if they're going to make him slightly smaller than leader class Megatron. Although in that case, he'd probably be pretty much a Voyager class figure at that point. I don't know. We'll just wait and see what they do. But regardless, I am so, so excited to get this guy. When the Studio Series line first kicked off, he's one of the figures that I was so, so looking forward to them releasing in the Studio Series line. Like, I love the Voyager Dark of the Moon shockwave figure that we got when Dark of the Moon came out. But of course, with the advancements in recent years with Transformers Engineering, I was really, really curious as to how they would do a Dark of the Moon shockwave figure now. And now here we are, we're finally getting him. And I, oh, I, I can't contain my excitement. I cannot wait to see this guy come out. He looks like he's going to be absolutely epic. So there we go. Those are the four new Decepticons that are going to be coming out and joining the Studio Series line. This looks like an awesome, awesome lineup. 2020 cannot come soon enough, I'm telling you. Just oh, have a really good feeling about this. This is going to be so awesome. But let me know with a comment or a video response what you guys think. And feel free to subscribe if you enjoy hearing my thoughts in this nerdy nerd world. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a good one.